So today I'm going to go over my shelter module for my grab and go or bug out bag. You know, it's the one that hangs in my laundry room right next to the door that exits into the garage where my car is. And I keep a lot of prepping supplies in my car. And I have various videos on that and I also keep the bug out roll in the car. So this is kind of supplemental. But I thought I'd share what I have in my shelter kit. And you know, shelter is one of the more difficult modules, I think, to incorporate. And of course, it depends on what time of the year it is and where you live. You know, what are your weather conditions? From those of you in the south, you know, winter is not as much struggle as for us up in the north. I mean, preparing for sub-zero Fahrenheit temperatures is quite a bit different than what you have to prepare for in the winter. And of course, those of you that live in more of a desert climate, well, what you prepare for is much different than what I need to prepare for. And realistically speaking, I'm not really preparing for below zero weather. Hopefully, if that happens, I'll be able to stay in my car or have another shelter available. And I keep an extra winter coat, boots, socks, jeans, that type of thing in the car just in case. Because those of us in Michigan, you know, it can be really cold outside and we might have a sweatshirt on, whatever, and we thought, hmm, we're just going to run to the store, you know, in the car. So we don't really need to get our coat and everything. And of course, what happens if your car breaks down? So I try to keep stuff in the car just in case. But let's talk about the individual items in my shelter kit. My shelter kit is in a gallon Ziploc bag, which will help keep the contents dry. And of course, this bag could be used for other things such as carrying water or when I'm foraging. Now let's go through the contents one by one. Now this was creased in half and I got it from survivalistsite.com and it's a little manual that, I think it's about five pages. I printed it both sides. See, has a lot of different diagrams. It has a bunch of different survival shelters to go through. You know, you go through your typical ones uh, using your poncho or your tarp, and of course, it goes into a debris hut, um, a fire reflector, and some of the various constructions that you can build if you need a survival shelter in the winter and you have a lot of snow. But anyway, I think it's a great thing to keep in my survival shelter module. Talking about building a survival shelter in the winter and snow, well, to help you have heat in that shelter, candles come in handy. So I have this one comes in a glass container and then two extra candles in the kit. Now I'd love to take this out and show it to you, but then my fear is always, can I get it back in a collapsible small package? Now, I have actually vacuum packed this. Didn't really make it, I think, that much smaller, however. It is a lightweight rain gear poncho emergency survival cover shelter from Norwegian Military Surplus. And it was $8.79. So the size is 5 feet in width by 4 feet in length. And if you open it up, it can actually be 8 feet in length. So you could use it as part of your shelter. And for me, it'll be going down just about... <laughs> To my ankles and it is a heavier duty material and I think you could use it quite a few times before having a problem now this is a two-person survival tent and again I'm not taking it out of the package because it might be hard to get back in and this is something that I really want to keep nice in my kit it is made by don't die in the woods they call it the world's toughest ultralight survival tent it's supposed to be able to fit two persons and it comes with paracord so you can hang it up between two trees. But if you wanted to and use it more as a bivy, you can tie up one end. And so you have kind of a slip-in bag. It's supposed to be made with tear-resistant extra thick heat flex mylar. And it's supposed to be stronger and more flexible than ordinary mylar. And it has 425 pound strength paracord and reinforced tape seams and it weighs only nine and a half ounces and we could use that poncho to go over one of the ends so it could protect you from insects or rain coming in through the sides but 
I thought this was a great little survival tent. This is a little Soul Emergency Bivy. I mean, it's very small. Um, see with my hand here. I mean, it's small. Fits in the palm of my hand. And it only weighs three and a half ounces. And supposedly it will reflect 90% of body heat. So again, a great thing to keep in a shelter kit. And this is just kind of because, let me open this up for you. So this is the hideaway parka and it was an item offered by BattleBox at one time but I wasn't a subscriber then but they had a flash friday sale and I got it just for the price of shipping and you know on the site for hideaway parkas it says $79 I would not pay $79 for this but for the price of shipping I thought why not um, the idea behind it is you see these green snaps you can open this up and you've got area that you can stuff it with lightweight material such as newspaper or leaves, you know, whatever you have on hand and it can give you extra insulation. And there are 10 different spots in this parka that you can stuff. So it could really help keep you warm, even uh, warm in your little survival tent. And believe me, right now without any stuffing it's keeping me warm because it's 90 some degrees out but anyway i thought i'd show it to you out of the package now the downside to this is it's water resistant not waterproof so really you need your poncho also because in a pouring rain you could get soaked using this but hey it was really just the cost of shipping so i thought why not include it oh yeah one more thing you know how I say I hate to take things out of the package because how do you get them back in the way they originally were? Well, this was relatively easy to put back in the stuff sack. So that is a definite plus. So that's it for the supplemental shelter kit. I would love to know what you keep for your shelter module in your bug out bag. Please comment below and please state what environment you are prepping for. You know, is it urban? Is it mainly wooded? Is it the winter in the north or the summer in the south? Please include that with your comments because I think we'll all find it very, very helpful. So I hope no one ever has to use the items in their shelter kit in an emergency situation, but it's great to have them there just in case. This is Prepper Popori saying please subscribe, share the knowledge, and thumbs up if you like this video.